let's take a look at how we can set up trpc with effect now if you're going to be using effect with trpc i believe it's because you want maybe a more stable solution a library that has been maintained for quite a while and it's not very prone to breaking changes compared to say effect rpc so in that case you're trying to patch trpc you're trying to make it as type safe as possible but obviously if everything isn't in effect, then it will not be perfect. So let me show you my approach. So the first thing that I would do is well create a server runtime. So in my case, under server, I'd have the layers directory, and I would have my repositories, my services, my controllers, everything here as layers so that I can easily test everything. I would also set up a span processor with open telemetry so that I can have full observability. And this is a must in my opinion specifically for the server now you can omit this in the front end if you want it's up to you obviously it would be great to have the two hooked up so that you can observe and have full traceability from the very start of a request. But at least for the server, make sure to have this. It will save you a lot of pain in the future. Now, as for the procedures themselves, everything is in effect. So schemas, well, I would use effect schema way better than SOD. And for mutations and queries, I would just do a server runtime dot run promise because this is a system boundary so it's okay to well run promise at the root of every single procedure but you should never do a run promise within effects so for example here to create a post i define the schema and then mutation i take in the context and now here's something important i define the trpc context as a service as a layer so you can yield the service and then you can access its methods its properties is whatever or well if you're doing everything with a pipe you can just do flat map trpc context and you get the context here and then well you can do or perform other effects here so for example i do a promise where i insert into posts and the values is the input now you might be wondering why am i using promise and not try promise for this well that's because if this fails then that means that something went wrong on our end so it's just a 500 anyway so in that case i just add a span for this work of unit i add a span to the whole procedure and this will die if this throws an error which is what we want and i believe trpc will translate that over to a 500 and then i say trpc context dot provide and then i pass in this context now what is this trpc context well it's just a context dot tag and this is the awaited of create trpc context and then i define a static method which is provide we take in the context and we abstract the effect that provides service that this tag and then the context that we pass in. The root of all of your procedures will have two things. They will have the run promise and they will have the trpc context.provide. And this is great because no matter how deep and nested your code and functions are, they can all access the trpc context without drilling through arguments. So this is what I would recommend and whichever solution you opt in for. Now here's something interesting, and that is I do a map on the success channel, and then I convert this over to a result.ok. Okay. So what is my approach? My approach to using trpc with effect is take it like GraphQL. You know that with GraphQL, errors are still 200. They are okay, but the consumer is the one that dictates whether or not they received an error. So in GraphQL, you usually send an array of errors and then the client can check that property. If it exists, then we know that we got an error. So we throw an error, we do whatever else we need to do. Instead of modeling that with 400, with 500 status codes, we do it all via the payload of the body. And why? Because I believe the 
TRPC client that you create, whether that's for React or the vanilla client, will throw a TRPC client error if you get something that is 400 or well 500. And that is not what we want. We want to maintain type safety all the way through. So for that, I created a really basic result type or implementation. And this one is meant only for communicating between the server and the client. This is not meant to be used outside of that context. For that, I would use either and also the effect module. Now, the reason why we cannot use either is because it attaches other properties, methods, and whatnot that cannot be serialized into valid JSON. So it just doesn't work. That's why I would advise you to create a simple result module that all you need is a match and is okay, is error, and then a way to wrap this into this module. So with this, the idea is all of your procedures will return results. Now you need to keep in mind that 500s can always occur. So even though a 500 will not be specified here in the result return type of the procedure, you should still be wary of a potential 500. And as you know, there are status codes that are assumed by default, 500 being one of them. Now, how can we model the errors? Well, for example, here, get latest. We yield the context. We do a context.db.query.posts find first. I add a span here so I can trace everything. And then for this demonstration, I yield a random.next boolean. And this comes from effect. And then if true, then I log the error and then I return a new error. Now notice how I'm not using return yield effect or fail and then new some error. That's because this some error is using data.tagged error. And this is yieldable. If I come here, as you can see, we have cost yield of all error. So all you need to do is flat map this error or yield this error, basically flatten this effect, and this will output a failure, which is what effect or fail does. So it's just a way to be less verbose. So we yield new some error, short circuit everything, and now at the top of your procedure, at the root, the idea is to catch tags. So that means that here, you would have a catch tags and then you would have some error and then you remap that over to a success channel into a result.fail or result.error and you should not do this internally. Why? Well, for readability and maintainability. So let me show you an example. Let's say you have a function that is get a post by ID. So you'd create a no post found error in your repository layer. Now the consumer knows, okay, I'm going to get a no post found error if there is no post. But if you were to remap that in the repository over to maybe a bad request error, if you hover over the method of the layer, you would see that it fails with a bad request error. But you as the developer, as the consumer have no idea what that represents. So the idea is you let all errors bubble up. Obviously, if they are not parts of your conditional branches, so you do not need to recover or do something else based on a certain error. The idea is you bubble them up here and then for each one, you remap them to client errors. So not found, bad request, etc. But you do not need to represent all of them. For example, if you know that some errors are because of internal errors, then there is no need to represent that as an internal server error because the consumer already assumes it might get a 500. So that's just my recommendation. Now, what is this client errors? Well, it's just a namespace I created. And for this, I just export a class with a tag and that's it. So that we can pattern match against these client errors. They do not have anything else. Why? Because they need to be serializable. If you start adding more things and they are not that serializable, then you can't communicate these errors with the client. So keep them as lean and as basic as possible. So for that, as you can see, even though I'm yielding the error here, I catch it here, I recover from it, and I say succeed error, which is just an effect that succeed by wrapping the error within error. 
So now this way we can communicate errors and success all via this result namespace. Now what about the client? How can the client convert this over to errors? Because what you want to do is allow the consumers. So when you do a query, a mutation to pattern match against these errors. So maybe you want to retry on a particular error. You want to notify the user about something in particular based on an error. So in those cases, what I did was create a run query function utility. So here we have the client runtime. If you need to add layers here, you can compose them all within this runtime. And then what we do is we create a create query function and a create mutation function. And what we basically do is we take in the function that calls the API. So we take in the promise that results in OK or error, assuming all of your procedures follow this convention, and we take the effect pipeline. So we take in an effect that is going to succeed with the OK of the procedure will fail with the error of the procedure or an unknown exception, obviously, and it doesn't require anything. And in fact, this is redundant. We can remove this because by default it is never. And then what we do is we call create effect from result. So we do a try promise. We take in the result promise, we pipe it through, and then we do a flat map. And then we match on the result of this. So if it's okay, well, we recover basically, or well, we translate that over to the success channel. And in the case of an error, we just say effect that fail and error. That way the consumer gets this nice API that they can pattern match against within this pipeline. And we also encapsulate the client runtime dot run promise. So now here in my data access directory, I have the latest post query. And here I like to use namespaces so that I can collocate both types and runtime variables. And what I do here is define the use query. And here notice how I say create query function. And then I pass in the query function, which is api.post.getLatest.Query. And then for the pipeline, I use flow because we take in an effect or rather tapper tag expects to take an effect. So instead of using a nested ugly pipe, we can just use flow. Then here we can tap into bad request error. And this is all inferred. As you can see, we only get unknown or bad request. And if you recall, if I come here, notice how we're only failing with bad request error. So that's why we only get the two. In this case, we say toast.error. So here you could notify the user, whatever. And here for retries, I can say times 10. And then a schedule, we say fixed for every one second. And then we tap the output. So every time this schedule is triggered, we notify the user retrying. And then we can tap and say toast.success successfully fetched latest post. But of course, you can recover from the errors. Maybe if you get, I don't know, a bad request, you do something else. Who knows? You get the power of being able to model everything as separate success and error channels with a nice and clear API. Now, the unknown exception could come from various different places. It could be a request error. The user does not have an internet connection. So ideally, within the create query function, you would handle this case. So you could remap it over to a request error. But this could also encompass a 500, a 503, whichever other reason which is out of your immediate control. The control being what you define within the procedure. So with this approach, you can do your queries, you wrap this up and you get a full type safety. And for example, here in the mutation, all I do is create a mutation function and I don't tap in into anything. But as you know, here, if I say effect and then tap error tag, we only get unknown exception. Why? Because well, the API does not model any errors. So we only do a result that okay. And now with this, we can come here to the post component. And as you can see, latest post query dot use query. Now again, the reason why I use namespaces is so that I can get the types here. 
So if I say type x is equal to, and then dot result, as you can see, I get everything in one. So I can invalidate queries. I can do, for example, here in the mutation, I can come here and say get query client dot, and then set query data, and then latest post query dot result. And then I have the base query key, so I can construct it like this. And I get a nice collocated structure for my queries. So now with this, if I open up my application, refresh, as you can see, we get the toasts. And if we get a true random Boolean, we get a bad request. So we can do the retries. So again, as you can see, one retry, and we're only getting one retry. Okay, now we got two. And as you can see, everything works just fine. Now, since you're using effect, make sure to come here over to your query client and make sure to pass in false for retry because with effect, you have way better retries since well, after all, you can compose schedules and you can also do it against the specific errors, way more ergonomic compared to Tansta queries. Now, what about the client? Because you have seen that I'm using api.post.create and mutate. I'm not using the React wrapper. And that's true. I'm using the vanilla client. So if I come here, as you can see, create your PC client, not create your PC React client. And why? Because one, it locks me down to the way of TRPC handling the queries. So while it provides a somewhat good developer experience, you can invalidate the queries with ease and whatnot, you lose control. For example, I couldn't find a way to tap into the response so that we can map over the result and separate the error channel with the success channel and also ultimately what you're storing within the cache of of React query. Although I may be wrong, if you know how to do that, do let me know. I couldn't find a way. And if it exists, I'm pretty sure it's a dumb solution. And as I understand by using this vanilla client, you lose the other things that are within the new React ecosystem. I've not been up to date with what is going on with the server side stuff of React. So I have no idea what features we're losing, but I know that we're losing some features. Now, since everything is hooked up with telemetry, we can come here, we can come to the effect T3 service, find traces, and as we can see, we get all of them here. And if I come here, find first and just took one millisecond. Now, the only thing is we're not getting the errors here in the spans, which is really bad because we're recovering from the errors. So here we're saying succeed with error. So what I would recommend is move the span up. So make sure to compose it before succeeding from the errors. So you still get the errors within your traces. So here, if I do this change and then come back here, now we get the errors. So order matters. So as we can see, we get the sum error log. So make sure to do that. And that should be it. If you have any questions, suggestions, comments, do let me know. You can also find the repository in the description. Anyway, thank you for watching. If you want to see more content like this, make sure to subscribe. I'll see you in the next one. See ya.